So you're going to need to go to the Water Quality Parameters Quest. Clicking here will take you to the Google Classroom link, or if you log into your account, you're going to look for the Water Quality Research Notes Assignment. That has the graphic organizer to help you organize the notes you are going to be taking. Clicking here will take you to the links to websites for dissolved oxygen so you can learn as much as you can about dissolved oxygen. So I'm going to right click and choose open link in new tab so I can have this tab open and be able to read about dissolved oxygen on the next tab. So this picture, I'm going to explain it in, in a slightly different way than it looks here. Um, so dissolved oxygen is, this is an important distinction, it's a non-compound oxygen in water. Now here's where people sometimes get confused. They think because one water molecule is made up of two hydrogens and an oxygen, that fish can get their oxygen right from the water. I mean, they do breathe oxygen through water, right? But here's what, they can't pull the hydrogen out of H2O. H2O, if I was going to draw a two-dimensional representation of it, oxygen is number eight on the periodic table of elements, so it's eight times bigger than hydrogen because hydrogen's number one. It's got one proton and one electron buzzing around it. So if I were to draw it, I'd have to kind of get the scale right, but we've got now the O I'm putting in the middle is the letter O for oxygen. This big circle I'm drawing is uh, one oxygen atom. Now I put a couple of hydrogen atoms on there. They're chemically bonded now. That's why the fish can't take the oxygen out of there through their gills. Gills don't do that. Um, and I, I purposefully made it look like a little bear because that, that kind of memorable. You can remember that two-dimensional representation of water. So let's say I've got my creek here. It's made up of trillions of these incredibly small water molecules. So imagine water is just all these water molecules mixed in with all the other stuff that's in the creek. Now, oxygen in the air hangs out in pairs. It is more stable when it is bonded with another oxygen. And we call that O2. That's oxygen. So when we breathe, remember, oxygen in our air, there's only 20% of our air is oxygen. But it's those two O2s in every oxygen molecule that we take from our lungs, or our blood does, and delivers to every cell so you can do everything you need to do. Well, when the air, so I'm going to draw it like this, two oxygens bonded together. They're in the air. When the air touches the water, oxygen from the air goes right into the water. It dissolves in between in between the different or, or all the, the water molecules. So when fish are breathing oxygen out of water, they're not taking it out of the H2O. They're taking the oxygen molecules that's in the water, in between the water molecules, and that's what's helping their cells do everything their cells need to do. And that's what's drawn here. Here's an O2. Here's another O2. This one's an H. 2O, see H H O, H H O. Here's another H two O, H H O, H two O. Now, you collected your data in milligrams per liter. So let's say you got eight milligrams per liter. Milligrams per liter also can be represented as parts per million. So literally, that means you found eight parts of O two for every million parts of H2O. That's how little there is, and yet that's enough for fish to survive. 
because a million parts of H2O molecules is a very teeny, teeny, tiny drop of water. So you can see there's so many of those teeny, tiny drops, there's plenty of oxygen. Um, dangerous level are when it gets below three. DO of two milligrams per liter or one milligram per liter, fish die. And they pop up dead right in the water. So this is a very important thing to know and to teach the kids in your circle at the Youth Summit, that the oxygen comes from the air and dissolves into the water. So that's the first step. Now, if we scroll, and, and yeah, I don't like the way they said it here, so I wanted to help you understand it. Now, dissolved oxygen is, ne dissolved oxygen is necessary to many forms of life, including fish, invertebrates, like the macros we found, bacteria, this is important, and plants. When you studied water pollution, you learned about oxygen depletion and eutrophication. The bacteria are what depletes or takes the oxygen out of the water uh, in huge amounts, especially when there's an algal bloom or anything decomposing in the water. Now, plants are interesting because during the day, they get sunlight, they photosynthesize, so they put oxygen directly into the water, aquatic plants. But at night, they have no sunlight, they can't photosynthesize, they got to breathe just like we do, so they're taking some of that oxygen back. Um, fish and crustaceans obtain oxygen for respiration through their gills, while plant life and phytoplankton require dissolved oxygen for respiration when there's no light for photosynthesis. See, photosynthesis is not respiration. Bottom feeders, crabs, oysters, and worms need minimal amounts, one to six milligrams per liter. One milligram per liter. Some of them can survive on that. That's not much. Shallow water fish, though, they need more. They need four to 15 milligrams per liter. But think about it. The shallow water is making more contact with the air, so it's going to have more dissolved oxygen, at least at the beginning. So what would you expect? A, a, a still lake or a moving river to have more dissolved oxygen? Did you say still river? Well, that makes sense, doesn't it? It's making more contact with the water. It's going over rocks. It's going around turns. It's crashing down. The more contact it makes with the water, the more oxygen from the air gets dissolved in it. While the lake here is waiting for the wind to come by and make contact and put the oxygen in it from direct absorption. It's directly absorbed from the air. So if it's a windy day, it's going to get more. If there's not much wind moving, it's going to get less that day. Let's see. Let's scroll down. So we just answered this one. Where does DO come from? Diffusion from atmosphere is another way of saying direct absorption. These are fancy ways of saying it comes right from the air. But it sounds good. Diffusion from atmosphere. Direct absorption. Use those words and you'll sound very intelligent. Photosynthesis gets more DO in the water. And then when the wind cycles the water, it can go down to the deeper sections of the water. So we got that. We got that. Photosynthesis. Aeration is another fancy word to say water gets more air and more dissolved oxygen. And in the ocean, you got waves that's making more contact with the air, more aeration. And if you have a fish tank, you aerate it by putting an air pump in there so your fish get oxygen as much as they need. Now this uh, shows what happens when carbon dioxide dissolves in the water. Well, if oxygen does it, so does carbon dioxide. Well, we know from ocean acidification, those of you who studied that, carbon dioxide plus water makes a uh, a carbonate makes a hydrocarbon so it will make a bicarbonate because it's gonna lose one positive hydrogen 
And as pH people will tell you, those positive hydrogens make the water more acidic. And for those of you who saw the video for ocean acidification, those hydrogens are taking the carbonates away from the shellfish so they can't form their shells. Now, saturation. This is a fancy word for saying how much uh, something can hold. Dissolved oxygen saturation means how much oxygen can water hold. Well, here's what's important and you need to know, and you might need to check with the temperature people. Cold water holds more DO. Well, the opposite is then true. Warm water holds less, less DO. So, few things are happening here. The water at the top in the ocean is getting more contact with the air, so more DO. But if it's warm during the summer, it can hold less. Now, the deeper water isn't getting the direct absorption from the atmosphere, but it's colder, so it can hold more DO, thereby providing DO for the deep water fish. Very good system there. Nature has its way. Let's see, so this, I think that's about as far as you need to go on that website. So let's check out the other one. Now these didn't have creative titles, they're just all about dissolved oxygen. Uh, this one has some important information. So it's, it reminds you that oxygen is one of several dissolved gases important to aquatic life, necessary to maintain aerobic conditions so that Sea creatures can breathe. That's what aerobic means, breathing. Um, but there's an important part. This tells you a little bit more about the temperature uh, that water needs to hold more DO. Fresh water at sea level has a saturation dissolved oxygen of about 14.6 milligrams per liter, which is a lot of DO. But that's at zero degrees Celsius, 32 degrees Fahrenheit. That's when water freezes. And 8.2 milligrams, see how it drops? At 25 degrees Celsius, 77 degrees Fahrenheit. So from freezing to 77 degrees, the amount of oxygen saturation drops from 14.6 to 8.2. So see, warm water holds less dissolved oxygen. Now, here are a couple of important words. Anadromous salmonids. Salmonids are fish that are in the family of salmon. Uh, and some trouts are salmonids. Well, I think all trouts are. You have to look it up. Anadromous refers to a fish that is hatched in a stream, but then makes its way out to sea to get big, and then comes back to the stream where it was born to spawn. So dissolved oxygen is one of the limiting factors for fish. If they have enough dissolved oxygen, they will thrive, survive, and come back to spawn. Now what can affect dissolved oxygen um, are, well, we already heard temperatures, low temperatures. Cold water is better, better for all stages of the salmon life cycle, so you salmon experts should know this. And this gives you information about the, the different levels of temperature for having healthy fish with enough dissolved oxygen. This one shows you the effect of dissolved oxygen on egg incubation and the temperatures that are needed. So fish started, or the eggs were dying at 2.1 to 2.3 milligrams per liter of dissolved oxygen. That's just not enough and then the water gets warmer, so that's not good. So that website has that information for you, so you can answer the questions about how does dissolved oxygen affect fish, besides just saying they need it to breathe. You can add way more detail than that. Now we go to the next one, dissolved oxygen in water. Now dissolved oxygen may vary in a stream from zero milligrams per liter, which it's horrible, 
to 18 milligrams per liter, where that's getting on the side of a bit too much. So here's what affects uh, dissolved oxygen. So we've already said water that is warm, less dissolved oxygen. So warm water is a pollution. Making water warmer is actually polluting it because it's reducing the dissolved oxygen. But now we get into what you learned with water pollution. Fertilizer from runoff from farms and lawns will cause aquatic plants like algae to grow out of control. That's an algal bloom. When those plants die, something's got to decompose them and eat them, and that is bacteria. So that bacteria will breathe as much dissolved oxygen as they need to continue eating and, and reproducing and surviving, and they use large amounts of it. They can cause dissolved oxygen to drop really uh, uh, drastically. And if it gets down to zero, then we get a new bacteria forming to finish decomposing that don't need oxygen, and they are toxic. They are poisonous, even worse than these bacteria that breathe oxygen. says here, students should be aware that plants in general only produce oxygen when light is available for photosynthesis. Rooted aquatic plants are more abundant in lakes and in pounded rivers than in rivers with, sig with significant currents or in streams. So this has how does dissolved oxygen affect aquatic life? And it's got a nice chart here for you to see that the more dissolved oxygen the more numbers of fish you can have in that part of the stream. So this is kind of obvious, but it's a great uh, way to, to show that that is important to have that much oxygen. A trout needs five to six times more DO when the water temperature is 24 degrees Celsius, which is 75 degrees Fahrenheit, as compared to when the water temperature is four degrees Celsius or 41 degrees five to six times more. So over the summer, if there's fish in our creek, they're suffering. They need way more DO. And the water level goes down because we're not getting as much rain. So summer really impacts our creek's fish. And here you've got the lowest DO at which fish survived for 24 hours in the summer. And uh, see, we don't have salmon there, but northern pike, six milligrams per liter. Common sunfish, which we do have uh, pumpkin seed sunfish in our creek, 4.2 milligrams per liter. So that's what you have there. Looking at the next one, dissolved oxygen, why is it important? This gives you a bit more information of what we just covered. And if you find this more understandable, read this one. This website, I put it here because uh, I, I thought more students would be able to understand it if you couldn't understand the other ones. And this tells you in stream dissolved oxygen four different uh, actions that the salmon need to do, like production of their embryo and larval stages when they, when they lay their eggs, no production impairment at 11 milligrams per liter. Well, yeah, that makes sense. That's a lot of dissolved oxygen. But severe impairment at seven that's not that low. Other life stages, non-salmonids, and this tells you about the summer problems that our fish face, and the expected impact of pollution. So there's good stuff here that uh, I'll let you read. And then we've got general oxygen information here, and this will tell you about how oxygen is measured, which is what we did, an electrode. Uh, we did not use field test kits. Kits. All right, so there's good stuff there if you read through that one. And then the last one for DO criteria has a picture on it that you might uh, want to refer to or use. This is, we, you know, I've shown you before on some of the other websites earlier, but this one is a nice picture of it. So it shows different fish, including worms, which is not a fish, uh, and it says worms can survive in water with only one milligram per liter of dissolved oxygen. 
That's why our worms are very tolerant. Whereas striped bass will need five to six milligrams per liter. So you can see the bigger the fish, the more dissolved oxygen it's going to need. So that's what this one is for. And that should give you plenty uh, to do a great presentation and make a great web page for your website.